A young couple travels to a remote island to eat at an exclusive restaurant where the chef has prepared a lavish menu with some shocking surprises. Welcome back to Movies Explained. Today's film is a horror from 2022 titled The Menu. At the local harbor, Tyler and Margot eagerly wait for the boat that will take them to a fancy private island. They plan to dine at Hawthorne, an exclusive restaurant run by the country's top chef, which Tyler is really into because he's a big food enthusiast. When the boat arrives, Tyler and Margot are surprised to see a bunch of important people on board. There's Lillian, the food critic who discovered the chef, along with her editor Ted. Also, there's George, a once famous actor, with his assistant and girlfriend Felicity, not to mention a trio of significant tech investors, Dave, Soren, and Bryce. However, Margot is most concerned about Richard, a businessman she knows, and his wife Anne. She doesn't want Richard to spot her, so she tries to stay out of his view. During the trip, they're served the first fancy dish, and Tyler excitedly praises it while snapping a picture. However, Margot doesn't find it impressive. Upon reaching the island, the head host Elsa mistakenly calls Margot by a different name. Tyler has to awkwardly explain that there was a change of plans, and he's there with a different date. Before they start dining, there's a tour for all the guests. Elsa guides them around, explaining that the restaurant's employees handle hunting and farming on the island which is why everyone resides there. The chef also lives on the island, but his house is off limits. Eventually, they enter the restaurant and find an open kitchen, allowing them to watch the cooks in action. At one of the tables, there's an elderly lady named Linda who seems out of place. When Richard finally notices Margot, he asks his wife to switch seats for a better view. Elsa mentions that watching the cooks is allowed, but photos are not. Tyler, however, moves closer to observe and bombards the cooks with questions leading them to ask him to stop distracting them. Just then, Chef Slowick arrives, and Elsa says something to him that makes him gaze at Margot. The first dish, a complimentary appetizer, is served. Lillian takes her time savoring the food, smelling and tasting it meticulously. Meanwhile, Felicity is occupied with trying to end things with George. Margot appreciates the dish, but isn't overly enthusiastic. Tyler, in his usual arrogant style, feels the need to explain why the experience is significant. Shortly after, the first course is served. Slowick steps forward and claps his hands, making all his cooks turn around simultaneously, like obedient soldiers. He then delivers a speech about his work, emphasizing that everyone should savor and relish the food, not just eat it. Tyler tries to comment but gets scolded by Slowick for interrupting. Despite the prohibition, Tyler continues to take pictures. For the second course, Slowick claps again and explains that since his guests are not common, they won't be served bread. Instead, they get a breadless plate with small drops of savory accompaniments. Tyler loves it, but Margot finds it insulting. Lillian notices the emulsion looks slightly split, and as a response, they send a whole bowl of it to her table as a sort of ironic joke. The tech bros, feeling the joke has gone too far, ask for bread, but their request is denied, even when they mention working for Doug Varick, the actual owner of the island. To silence them, Elsa cryptically informs them that they will eat less than they desire and more than they deserve. Margot declines to eat her dish, and when Tyler attempts to take it for himself, he accidentally breaks a glass. Slowick quickly comes over to the table, and despite Tyler's apologies, the chef is more concerned about why Margot isn't eating. Margot explains there's no food, and Slowick responds that he purposely portioned the dishes so that if she doesn't eat, she won't be full. Margot remains steadfast in not wanting to touch the dish, leading Slowick to leave somewhat offended. To everyone's surprise, he then gently checks on Linda. Margot glances at Richard, and Anne notices, commenting that Margot bears a resemblance to their dead daughter. Richard pretends not to recognize Margot and asks his wife to change the subject. Slowick, with another clap, introduces the third course called Memory, and shares a personal story about his family's old taco nights. He reveals that Linda is his mother, and that she has been struggling with alcoholism since he was a child. Slowick explains that his father was also an alcoholic, and one night when Linda confronted him, he tried to harm her with a phone cord. In an attempt to protect his mother, young Slowick grabbed a pair of scissors and stabbed his father in the thigh. However, he now regrets not having gone further. The dish, named after that memorable taco night, consists of a smoked chicken thigh served with a pair of scissors on top of a phone cord. The tortillas, freshly made, have a touch of innovation with laser-engraved patterns. The mood takes a dark turn as everyone is unsettled by Slowick's family story. However, things become even more awkward when they notice memories engraved on the tortillas. 
Lillian discovers images of restaurants that close due to her negative reviews, shocking her. Anne is horrified to find photos revealing her husband's private life, including one where Richard is with another woman, though he insists it's just a prank. George stumbles upon pictures from his poorly received movie, Dr. Sunshine. The tech bros are disturbed to find their company's manipulated tax records showing fake charges. When confronted, Elsa refuses to disclose how they got this information. As the men threaten to shut down the place, Elsa cryptically states that it won't be necessary. Tyler, noticing himself taking pictures of the food, feels that Slowick dislikes him. Margot, finding the images offensive, wants to send the dish back. However, Tyler snaps at her, calling her a child for not behaving properly. Hurt, Margot decides to go to the bathroom, and Elsa hurries to prevent her from entering a forbidden silver door. Once in the bathroom, Margot approaches the window to smoke and observes an employee running with a pair of angel wings in his arms. Soon after, Slowick approaches Margot, questioning why she declined to eat again and expressing feeling hurt by her attitude. Margot simply claims she isn't very hungry. Slowick is curious about Margot's identity, but when she insists she's just Margot from Nebraska, he remains skeptical. Shortly afterward, the cooks start preparing the fourth course, arranging fabric and decorations on the floor. Slowick introduces Jeremy, one of his sous chefs, who created the next dish named The Mess. Despite Jeremy's education from a prestigious culinary school and his dream of working for Slowick, the head chef doesn't believe Jeremy is exceptional. Slowick acknowledges Jeremy's talent but perceives his own life as filled with pressure, along with the challenges of dissatisfied customers and unappreciative critics. Slowick inquires if Jeremy desires the challenging life he leads, and upon Jeremy's negative response, Slowick embraces him with kisses on both cheeks. However, Jeremy then surprises everyone by pulling out a gun. Following this unexpected turn, Slowick announces the fourth course, and Jeremy concludes matters right then and there. The other cooks remain unsurprised, watching solemnly, while the guests, except for Tyler, react with shock and step back. As the body is removed, Slowick urges everyone to sit down, insisting that this is part of the show. Conversations ensue among the guests about whether the death was genuine. Richard decides he's had enough and attempts to leave with Anne, but Elsa intervenes, explaining there's no available boat. Despite Elsa's explanation, Richard persists, prompting Elsa to instruct the chefs to restrain him and retrieve his ring finger. The guests, except for Tyler, panic as Richard rides in pain on the floor. Elsa returns the fallen wedding ring to Anne, and Slowick reiterates that this is all part of the menu. While Lillian accepts it, others are growing increasingly fearful. Felicity urges George to talk to Slowick, thinking they're friends, but George admits he lied to impress her. Elsa brings Margot to the kitchen, where Slowick insists she's not a Margot and wasn't part of the original menu plan. He questions whose side Margot is on, but it doesn't matter since everyone is supposed to die that night. Margot returns to her table in tears and slaps Tyler when he won't stop talking about the food. The atmosphere in the restaurant is tense and nervous. Soren attempts to break a window with a chair in a fit of madness, but it's made of unbreakable glass, and Elsa escorts him back to his table. The next course, a tea served as a palate cleanser, is introduced by Slowick, who opens the floor for questions. Tyler asks a silly question about the tea, but George steps in, genuinely curious about the situation. Slowick explains they are ingredients in a degustation concept, citing examples like Lillian being a restaurant closing monster due to her personal taste, and Ted indulging her. More broken emulsion is brought for Lillian, and Elsa gives Margot a kitchen timer, signaling she has 10 minutes. Anne requests a doctor for Richard, prompting Slowick to mention their loyalty as customers for five years. He challenges them to name a single dish they've eaten here. Slowick, once aspiring to be an exclusive chef, now realizes he's been catering to people who can't be satisfied, much like his own mother. As Slowick consistently refers to the place as his restaurant, Bryce reminds him that Doug Varick is the actual owner. Slowick claims ownership of Doug himself, and it's then revealed that Doug is hanging outside, wearing angel wings. Dave attempts to offer money to save Doug, but when Slowick refuses, Dave tries to escape, only to be intercepted by the staff. Bryce mentions that Doug supported Slowick during the pandemic, but Slowick complains about Doug questioning his menu. Elsa signals, and Doug is lowered into the sea until he drowns. Slowick declares he's finally free and heads to his office. Suddenly, Margot's timer rings and she's called to see Slowick. 
Margot admits she shouldn't be there, and in return, Slowick acknowledges that Margot is also from the industry. He wants to know why she kept staring at Richard, and Margot confesses she's a street worker. Richard was one of her clients who wanted her to pretend to be his daughter during intimate moments, which had rattled her. Both Slowick and Margot agree that serving others used to bring them joy, but dealing with difficult clients has made them dislike their jobs. Afterward, Slowick leads everyone outside, the next course is presented by sous chef Catherine. She reveals Slowick's previous advances towards her, which she rejected. Although he didn't fire her, Slowick stopped making eye contact, inspiring the next dish named Man's Folly. Catherine then unexpectedly stabs Slowick in the leg, hugs him, and stains his chef uniform with blood, prompting him to apologize. Now, all the male guests are given a chance to escape with a head start of 45 seconds before the staff tries to catch them. The men start running, except for Tyler, whom Slowick urges to join them. Meanwhile, Catherine takes the women inside to try the sixth course. They share a table with Catherine, who reveals that the concept of everyone dies was her idea. Lillian's compliments move her to tears, and the other women join in with compliments to keep her content. Anne questions Margot about her familiarity with her husband, and Margot confesses to knowing him. However, Anne doesn't offer any comments. Margot eventually reveals her true name is Erin, and she hails from Massachusetts. Meanwhile, Tyler outside watches them through the window, upset about missing a course. Simultaneously, the staff pursues the men, finding them without difficulty, whether in the forest or on the beach. Ted hides in the smokehouse and is rewarded with a Passard egg for his efforts. All the men are returned to the restaurant, where George sarcastically apologizes to Felicity for his perceived failure, leading her to confess she's been stealing money from him. George was already aware, and Felicity knew he knew. Suddenly, Slowick declares that the planned menu can't proceed until an unresolved matter is addressed. He confronts Tyler, forcing him to admit that he had always known tonight's menu would involve everyone dies. Tyler had a date, but his girlfriend broke up with him. To secure a reservation at the restaurant, which didn't take bookings for solo diners, he hired Margot, oblivious to the fact that she was meant to be part of the night's unsettling plan. Margot, upon learning this, becomes upset and attacks Tyler, but the staff intervenes quickly. Following this, Slowick notices Tyler's extensive knowledge about food and gifts him a chef's uniform. Despite Tyler's reluctance, Slowick pushes him into the kitchen, urging him to cook in front of everyone. Tyler's cooking becomes chaotic especially with Slowick mocking him as Mr. Knowledgeable Foodie. As a result, the final dish turns out to be an absolute disaster. Slowick informs Tyler that he's responsible for taking away the mystery from his culinary art and whispers something in his ear, prompting Tyler to remove the chef jacket and run away in tears. Later, Slowick takes Margot aside and asks for a favor. They need a large barrel in a corner for dessert preparation, but Elsa forgot to bring it. Despite Elsa's offer to have the staff handle it, Slowick insists that Margot fetch it. While on her way, Margot discovers Tyler has ended things for himself, but she remains indifferent. Slowick then returns to the dining area, where George objects, stating that this isn't fair. Slowick explains that George is being punished for negatively reviewing Dr. Sunshine years ago, ruining Slowick's rare day off. Conversely, Felicity is destined to die because she graduated from Brown University without any student debt. Meanwhile, Margot reaches the smokehouse. Instead of grabbing the barrel, she picks up a knife. Later, she sneaks into Slowick's house, a duplicate of the restaurant but with a bed. Margot attempts to exit through the silver door, but is interrupted by Elsa, who also has a knife and reminds her that this area is off-limits. Suddenly, Elsa attacks Margot, expressing her fear of being replaced. Margot defends herself using objects from the kitchen, insisting she doesn't want to work there. Elsa counters that she didn't forget the barrel. Slowick just never requested it. The two women end up struggling on the floor, and in her attempt to keep the knife away, Margot accidentally kills Elsa. Once Margot calms down, she takes Elsa's keys and opens the silver door. Inside, she discovers a simple room filled with Slowick's memories from a happier time when he had a family and worked making hamburgers. The room also houses a radio, and Margot attempts to use it to call for help. Back at the restaurant, Bryce is pleasantly surprised with a cake a gesture arranged by his friends who informed the restaurant of his birthday. Suddenly, the moment is interrupted as Margot enters, carrying a barrel through the main entrance. Slowick reveals a darker past, admitting he was once a monster, 
However, he declares that his actions now are purely driven by good intentions. He brags about the resilience of his chef's hands, claiming he can touch fire without feeling pain because he can no longer be hurt. At that moment, a boat approaches the island, and Slowick realizes Margot used the radio. The staff swiftly cleans all traces of blood from everyone, and Slowick issues a threat. If the guests seek help, an innocent man will die. Coast Guard Dale enters the restaurant, inquiring about the problem, but no one speaks up. Dale notices George and requests an autograph, as he's a Dr. Sunshine fan. George pretends to give him one. As Dale is about to leave, he discovers the paper actually says, help us, and brandishes a gun, ready to protect the now courageous guests who start speaking up. Dale briefly aims the gun at Slowick, then turns around and points it at the candle on Margot's table, revealing it's a lighter shaped like a gun. Dale isn't a Coast Guard, he's another member of Slowick's staff and can now return to the kitchen. Slowick expresses deep disappointment in Margot for betraying him, deeming her no different from the other guests. Margot recalls the memories she saw in the house and decides to take a bold step. She claps suddenly to grab Slowick's attention, declaring her dissatisfaction with his food and expressing a desire to send it back. Slowick, falling for Margot's manipulative approach, listens as she critiques all the dishes as mere intellectual exercises, lacking enjoyment. Still hungry, she insists on having a regular cheeseburger instead of an elaborate, deconstructed dish. Remarkably, Slowick smiles for the first time that day and agrees to prepare a traditional cheeseburger with fries for $9.95. All the cooks observe with fascination as Slowick happily crafts a classic cheeseburger, presenting it to Margot with a sense of pride. Margot takes a bite, approves of the taste, but finds it too much to finish. She asks for the remainder to be packed to go. Slowick, still in a trance, follows her request. Once Margot has her bag, she leaves a $10 bill and exits the restaurant. As she hesitates on her way out, considering the others still in danger, Anne signals her to go. Margot reaches the harbor and escapes on the boat Dale left behind. Meanwhile, Slowick reminds everyone it's time to settle the bill. The cost is $1,250 per person under a no-tip system, and each person receives a bag of goodies, including one of Doug's fingers. Guests provide their credit cards, and shortly after, Slowick announces it's time for dessert. The cooks transform the floor into a makeshift plate, adorning it with chocolate hats and marshmallow vests for the guests. Slowick declares that the guests, representing the ruin of his life, will now become a part of it. He introduces the dessert, intending it to be the most offensive assault on the human plate, the s'more. Typically prepared over a fire, Slowick grabs a lump of coal from the oven with his bare hands, announcing a cleansing as he throws it onto the decorated floor. This ignites a fire that engulfs the restaurant and everyone inside. The movie ends as Margot stops the boat to savor her cheeseburger while observing the burning restaurant. She uses the menu from the gift bag to wipe her mouth. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.